Welcome back to the Hubbard's Handmade Shop. I am Ryan Hubbard. Today I am here with our new dog, Pancake. And because of this new dog, who is much bigger than dogs we've had in the past, we are going to be installing this pet safe wall entry pet door. Uh, you don't have to go with this brand, but I just wanted to give some general tips about installing this through the drywall and the exterior of the house. We're going to start by exploring our pet door. They include instructions in here as well as hardware that we're going to need. Don't throw away this piece of cardboard. This is the template that you're going to use to put on the wall to see exactly where your door is going to end up on the inside and on the outside of the house. So the reason why this expands is so that you can have different thicknesses of walls. So when you end up putting it together, no matter what thickness your wall is, you'll be able to cover the gap in between. You're going to need a stud finder. I picked this one up at Costco and it doesn't have to be this kind, but I think that this does make it much easier because instead of one or two indicator lights, this one has a whole row of them so you can see as you move it along the wall exactly where you have things behind the wall. So we're probably getting some false readings in here because of this is an insulated exterior wall. Uh oh. Okay, so I need to redo some of that. Stud Actually, finder. it's a good thing to say, just say hey. Our initial assessment found that there was a stud here, but a big metal beam in the wall right here that's holding up the second floor of the house. Where we wanted to put the dog door is not going to work. Be sure to look on the outside of the house as well, because when we measured, there's actually an electrical outlet on the right side of this stud. So left and right has an electrical outlet. So we have to skip one stud down which is right here. We should be about 16 inches on center, so the next stud over is right here at the carpet line. Also, I don't want to mess with the baseboards, and these frames have a flange around the outside that's an inch and a half big, so I'm going to go at least two inches off of the baseboard before I put up my template. And then my stud is right there and right there. Are we committed? Uh, yep. Okay, here we go. We're gonna drill a hole. That's good, I meant no resistance. Oh, my drill bit's not long enough. I have a really long drill bit made for this kind of thing. Let's go find out where this ends up on the outside of the house. All right, so there you can see the exterior outlet that I was talking about. We went one stud over from that and that's gonna work out just perfect. The reason why there are three holes is so that you can bring your template outside when you're done drilling through on the inside. Line up the three holes and that will give you the corners of your template. What you're supposed to do is line it up and then drill your holes from the outside going in. Because I used a stud finder and I established where my wiring was and I've already drilled my holes so I know that I'm that there are no wires here. But if you're not sure about what's on the other side of your wall, here's a trick that you can use to not accidentally drill into any wires or use like a drywall saw and cut into the wires of the house. Block of wood, a corner right on your line where you know the stud is and you're just going to break wide, right into the drywall and you're not going to accidentally go through any wires with a block of wood. Okay, so there's our drywall, there's our stud, I can reach right in and feel it. Now I'm confident of where my stud is and where my template is going to go. I'm going to go ahead and cut out the shape of the door. It's a good idea to check your work area. I've taken out the insulation and I'm not cutting into anything I'm not supposed to. So I'm ready to go and cut. I'm gonna go ahead and take my saw and cut through the outside layer of the house and the particle board underneath.
So the next step is I'm going to make a couple of 2x6s to fit so that when I frame this in, it doesn't allow any heat transfer to the rest of the house. It's a good idea for a barrier. One other step that I like to take is I'm going to prep this with the screws before I get it in the wall. That way it's easy to screw it right in without messing around trying to find these holes. So I decided to add one more board to frame out this area and that way my drywall screws will go into a stud when I put the door into the wall. We're just going to match up our exterior with our interior. You can look right through the flap here to make sure that your sides come together properly. It's very often a good idea to pre-drill holes, especially in this exterior board. So, just give it a little... that. So the door is finally done and we've been using it for a couple of weeks now. Uh, the dogs took a little bit of training but uh, all in all it's really working out well. In part two of this video I'm going to show you how I built this ramp to compensate for the height of this door. The dogs took a little bit of training on this as well but it's been working out really well. Okay buddy go kennel up. Good boy. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure and look for part two about building this ramp. Uh, it was actually really easy and anybody could do it. Thanks again and see you next time. Oh, my drill bit's not long enough. Sorry about your short drill bit. <laughs> My drill bit was not long enough. Fortunately, I have. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs>